This video will show you how to write chemical formulas for ionic compounds that contain polyatomic ions. A polyatomic ion is an ion that contains more than one atom. It can also be thought of as a group of atoms which acts as a single unit and has its own unique charge. An example of a polyatomic ion is the nitrate ion, which has the formula NO3 and has an overall charge of negative 1. Here's a simple drawing of a nitrate ion. It maintains this structure when it forms compounds. The bonds between N and O atoms do not break, so it remains as NO3-. An ion table provided in Science 10 gives the names, formulas, and charges of many common polyatomic ions. The only positive polyatomic ion on this table is the ammonium ion on the very left at the top. The rest are negative ions, or anions, and they are in alphabetical order by name. Notice the endings of the names of polyatomic ions. Many end in eight, some end in eight, and a few end in eyed. We must be very careful with these endings when we're looking for and using these ions. Also notice there are a few polyatomic ions that have more than one possible name. They have a comma between the two names. For example, hydrogen carbonate, HCO3- can also be called bicarbonate. Be aware that the bi prefix in these ions does not mean two. It actually stands for hydrogen. Chemistry can be confusing at times. Like binary ionic compounds, there are two methods that will show you for finding formulas of compounds with polyatomic ions. They are, number one, equalizing positive and negative charges, and number two, crossing down the charges. Let's do an example using the first method. We're asked to find the formula for nickel 3 chlorate. We write in the names of the ions, nickel 3 and chlorate. The positive ion is nickel, so looking it up on the periodic table, we find its box. Because nickel in the name has a Roman numeral 3 beside it, its charge is positive 3. So the positive ion is nickel 3 plus. So we'll add that to the table here. The negative ion in this compound, chlorate, is found on the table of ions. Its formula is ClO3 minus. It's a polyatomic ion, so we treat it like a single unit. Make sure you don't get chlorate and chlorite mixed up. Their endings are very close. We must pay very close attention to the endings of polyatomic ions and make sure we choose the right one. We'll add the chlorate ion to the table here. Remember, looking at the formula for an ion, the charge is on the top right. So a negative sign here means the charge on chlorate is negative one. It's important to remember that the subscript on the bottom of the formula, the three in this case, is not the charge. It has nothing to do with the charge. It simply tells us that a chlorate ion has three oxygen atoms. It's the sign or number and sign on the top right that is the charge. As we said, in the chlorate ion, the charge is negative one. We see that the two charges are not equal and opposite. They do not add up to zero. In order to equalize the positive and negative charges, we add two more chlorate ions so that we have three chlorate ions altogether. Each chlorate ion is a single unit with a charge of negative one. So the total negative charge now is three times negative one, which is negative three. So the total charges now are equal and opposite. Positive three and negative three add up to zero. So we just count the number of each kind of ion to get the formula down here at the bottom. We have one Ni ion and three ClO3s. To show that ClO3 is a single unit, and there are three of them, we add brackets around the ClO3 like this. Notice the right bracket is between the subscript 3 on the ClO3 polyatomic ion and the other subscript 3. The subscript 3 on the polyatomic ion just tells us that the chlorate polyatomic ion has three oxygen atoms. And this subscript 3 outside the brackets tells us there are three chlorate ions in the compound nickel-3-chlorate. Just a note here about brackets. 
If there's only one unit of a particular polyatomic ion in a compound, brackets are not needed and should not be included. If you include brackets in a formula where they are not needed, you'll get the formula wrong. Some examples are these. Silver nitrate, AgNO3, with one nitrate ion. Since there's only one nitrate, there are no brackets around it. Ammonium chloride, NH4Cl, with one ammonium ion. Since there's only one ammonium ion, there are no brackets around it. And potassium hydrogen sulfite, KHSO3, with one hydrogen sulfite ion. Since it has only one HSO3 ion, there are no brackets around it. If there is more than one unit of a particular polyatomic ion in a compound, brackets are needed and must be included. Examples are copper 2 nitrate, CuNO32, which has one copper atom and two nitrate ions. Since it has two nitrates, there are brackets around the nitrate. Ammonium carbonate is another example, NH42CO3, which has two ammonium ions and one carbonate ion. So the ammonium ion is in brackets because there are two of them, but the carbonate ion is not because there's only one of them. Chromium-2-phosphate, Cr3PO42, has three chromium atoms and two phosphate ions. Brackets are never used for single atoms, so there are no brackets around the Cr. And there are two phosphate ions, so brackets must be added around the phosphate, PO4. We'll do one more example using this method. We'll find the formula for tin 4 chromate. We'll add the ion names here, tin 4 and chromate. We'll look up tin on the periodic table, and we find that tin is element number 50. The Roman numeral 4 in the name tells us it's SN4+. So we'll add its symbol and charge here on the table. We find the polyatomic ion chromate here in the ion table. It's CRO4 with a 2 minus charge. So we add it here in the table. We see that the charges are not equal and opposite at this point. They do not add up to zero. We can solve this by adding another chromate ion to the compound. So we have two chromates altogether. Each chromate ion has a charge of negative two. So the total negative charge is two times negative two, which is negative four. The two charges are now equal and opposite and they add up to zero. So we have the correct number of each kind of ion. So our final formula has one SN atom and two CRO4s in brackets, like this. This method actually works better than the cross-down method for compounds where one ion has a plus four charge and the other one has a minus two charge. If the cross-down method was used, you would initially get the formula SN2 CRO44 but then you would have to reduce it to SnCrO42 in order to be correct. Let's do a new example using the crossing down charges method. We're asked to write the formula for ammonium phosphite. We find the ammonium ion on the top left of the ion table. It's NH4 with a plus one charge. So we can jot it down here. We find the polyatomic ion phosphite here on the ion table. As we've said, it's important to pay really close attention to the endings of these names and realize that it's phosphite and not the more common phosphate. So we can add the formula for the phosphite ion to our other diagram here. The charge on the ammonium ion, NH4, is only a plus or plus one, and we don't bring down ones to the formula. So at this point, we ignore the plus. However, the three on the charge of the phosphite ion is brought down and placed on the lower right of the ammonium ion, NH4, right here. Because we have three units of the same polyatomic ion, ammonium, we must add brackets around the ammonium or NH4 ion like this. So this is the final formula for ammonium phosphite, NH43PO3.